Today we will be talking about amylogenesis imperfecta. Amylogenesis imperfecta, abbreviated AI, describes a group of genetic disorders that affect the structure and appearance of the enamel layer or outer layer of the teeth. The photo shows what a more severe form of AI may look like clinically. The prevalence of AI is rather low at about 0.5%. AI is a more complicated genetic disorder that can be inherited in several different patterns, with autosomal dominant being the most common pattern of heredity. Other possible patterns of heredity include autosomal recessive, X-linked dominant, or X-linked recessive. All teeth, both primary and permanent, can be affected in those with AI. There has not been a connection found between any particular disease or nutritional deficiency and individuals with AI. An important finding to look for is the integrity of the dentin, cementum, and pulp because these should appear normal as only the enamel is affected. Note how the photograph shows disruptions in the enamel, particularly notable in the maxillary central incisors. Another notable feature is that eruption is often affected and delayed leading to the possibility of impacted teeth. <clears throat> To understand how enamel is affected in AI, we need to briefly review the concept of tooth development. Enamel is derived from ectodermal origin, specifically the ameloblasts, that differentiate from the inner enamel epithelium of the dental organ during tooth development. The diagram at the right labels where in the dental organ the inner enamel epithelium becomes ameloblasts, which will eventually secrete matrix molecules that contribute to the formation of enamel. These matrix molecules are genetically regulated by genes, specifically AMEL, ENAM, MMP20, and KLK4. These genes are the ones that appear to be most often mutated, disrupting proper enamel development and resulting in various types of AI. There are several types of AI due to the complex timing of when the disruptions occur during enamel formation. The four main types are type 1, or hypoplastic type, type 2, or hypomaturation type, type 3, or hypocalcified type, and type 4, which is a mixture of both hypomaturation and hypoplastic type with torodontism present. In type 1 AI, there is thin enamel that may be rough, pitted, smooth, or glossy. Due to the thin enamel, the underlying dentin, dentin shows through and gives the teeth a yellow-brown appearance. The teeth may also be undersized and square-shaped, leading to a loss of interproximal contacts. This can be seen in the image on the right, along with the rough, pitted enamel. In type 2 AI, the enamel is of normal thickness, but is often soft and mottled, having a similar density to that of dentin. Teeth also tend to have a white opaque appearance near the incisal or occlusal areas, giving them a snow-capped appearance, as can be seen in the image. In type 3, teeth are normal size and shape with normal enamel thickness. The enamel is, however, poorly mineralized, less so than dentin. There also can be increased staining and the permeability of enamel. In type 4 AI, patients typically present with mottled or discolored enamel, giving it a yellow-brown appearance. Radiographically, this type will also reveal torodontism, as can be seen in the image. Identification of AI is primarily made by clinical examination, though the radiographic features substantiate the clinical impression and help differentiate subtypes. Bite wings are beneficial to preserve the contrast between enamel and dentin and measure the thickness of enamel. Pantomographs and periapical radiographs are prescribed to view the disturbed teeth, as well as other accompanying defects related to AI. These include delayed eruption and tooth impaction, pulp stones and pulp calcifications, root and crown resorption, attrition, and abrasion. 
The radiograph shown here is a case of hypoplastic AI where the left canines failed to erupt and exhibit crown resorption. In type 1, the enamel is reduced in thickness, appearing as a thin layer of radiopaque enamel with normal contrast to dentin. The pitted enamel seen in this type of AI shows up as sharply localized areas of modeled density radiographically. The tooth crowns appear square shaped with lower absent cusps and open interproximal contacts are commonly seen as previously mentioned. A characteristic picket fence appearance of anterior teeth is also eminent radiographically. The pantomographs displayed here show the thin, distinctive radiopaque layer of enamel, notably on the posterior teeth. The patient on the left also exhibits attrition, loss of cusp types, and pulp stones in the molars. In type 2, there is a normal thickness and quantity of enamel, but the radio density is similar to dentin, showing decreased contrast between the tissue types. The soft enamel pre presented in hypomaturation type is susceptible to abrasion, fracture, and chips. The pantomograph displayed here shows almost equal radiopacity of enamel and dentin with marked wear on the anterior teeth. In type 3, the thickness and quantity of enamel is normal, but the radio density is even less than that of dentin. This poorly mineralized enamel is weak and subjected to fracture, abrasion, and chips. The pantomograph featured here shows the enamel re less radiopaque than its underlying dentin. This patient also displays proximal caries, spacing, and general attrition. As seen here in the radiograph, the altered radio density of the enamel can make it hard to distinguish certain radiographic signs. In type 4, the enamel appears thinner than normal with a radio density similar to dentin. Torodontism is a developmental anomaly coupled with this type, presenting large pulp chambers and displaced bifurcation of the posterior teeth. The pantomograph illustrates the characteristic features of this type with torodontism evident in the first molars. Some differential diagnosis, diagnoses to consider with AI would be dentinogenesis imperfecta, fluorosis, and molar incisor hypomineralization. A few questions to ask to aid in the diagnosis of AI are, has anyone else in the family had anything like this? Has there been anything in the patient's medical history which might have caused sufficient metabolic disturbance to affect enamel formation? Are all the teeth affected in a similar manner? And is there a chronological distribution to the appearance of the defect? Dentinogenesis imperfecta is a genetic anomaly that mainly affects dentin that can occur in both primary and permanent dentitions. There are three types. In type 1, teeth have an amber-like translucency and the enamel is often chipped. Radiographically, you may see short roots and pulp chamber obliteration. This type often occurs in combination with osteogenesis imperfecta. In type 2, teeth have opalescent dentin and have more clinical variation. In type 3, you may see pulp, multiple pulpal exposures in the primary dentition and large variation in the shape and color of teeth. When differentiating between AI and dentinogenesis imperfecta, the presence of abrasion may make it difficult because dentinogenesis imperfecta and type 2 AI may both show this finding. Fluorosis occurs when fluoridated water, water is ingested at levels above one part per million during crown formation. This results in hypoplasia or hypocalcification appearing similar to AI. The severity is determined by duration, timing, and intensity of fluoride concentration. The appearance ranges from white enamel spots, mottled brown and white discolorations to pitted irregular discolored enamel. To differentiate Fluorosis from AI it is important to note that fluorosis is caused by environmental factors and AI is caused by genetic factors. Molar incisor hypomineralization is an enamel 
enamel developmental defect arising from systemic origin. It is associated with hypomineralized enamel on first permanent molars and often the central incisors. It appears as distinct opacities on the enamel and clearly demarcated from the surrounding normal enamel. To differentiate MIH from AI, it is important to note that MIH is limited to just the permanent molars and incisors, while AI can affect all the teeth in the mouth, primary or permanent. Treatment with amylogenesis imperfecta can be somewhat tricky. The main objectives of treatment are pain prevention, protecting teeth for as long as possible, and helping the patient have the best aesthetics that they can possibly have. Not surprisingly, patients typically, typically present because they are in pain, but are also very self-conscious about the way they look. There are various specific treatment options. Stainless steel crowns can maintain VDO, whereas composites can be placed in the anterior without prepping the teeth. These techniques can help young patients that have some dental anxiety. Along with this, flowable composite has been cited to reduce Roughened enamel surfaces, which helps prevent the formation of a biofilm. Composite veneers and full composite crowns have also been used as an option, but these typically have a higher rate of recurrent decay, regardless of the aesthetics. To treat patients' hypersensitivity, fluoride, toothpaste, and CCP and ACP have been cited to be successful. Regardless of the treatment that is selected, the most important things to remember are the three objectives of treatment. Pain prevention, protecting the teeth, and maintaining aesthetics. Treatment considerations are an important part of any treatment plan. If a patient presents with hypomineralized teeth, full coverage crowns, like composite crowns, are indicated because the disease state progresses the fastest. Also, it is important to see a patient with AI as soon as possible but not be too aggressive with the treatment. As soon as restorations are initially placed, the likelihood of bigger restorations being placed further down the road increases, as well as the chance for a full prosthesis. This should be avoided if possible. Along with this, the practice, practitioner should emphasize good oral hygiene and diet as AI patients are especially susceptible to the caries process. The task of AI patient management is typically taken on by a pediatric dentist at a young age and later by a restorative dentist for the lifelong management of the patient. And here are references. And here are our image citations.